Hi everybody, it's April. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am going to be working on making a card using Jamie's um, newest release from the Not Too Shabby Shop. This is her brand of stamps. I'll leave a link to Jamie's YouTube channel and also to her store um, down in the description below. Um, this one is so adorable. It has the little fox with the sweater, a little squirrel, a couple of gnomes in their um, Christmas pajamas and jumpers, a little stump, uh, this cute little Christmas tree with some snow detail on it, um, some ornaments, snowflakes, a present, and a little holly berry or mistletoe, and it says, Have a Magical Winter. So I'm really excited to use this set. And I'm trying to think if it has a name. Uh, I don't see one on the packaging, but again, oh, here it is, Magical Winter. My apologies. Hi, everybody. So thank you so much for watching my channel. I am working on a masking technique where I want to make a scene using the stamps. And so I'm laying out kind of what I want in the forefront, you know, putting them all on top of each other so I know what would be the first thing to stamp. So from what I've learned with masking is this is kind of how you do it. You would want to lay everything out so you know which ones are going to be the most forward on the image. And in this case, it would be the little fox is the first stamp. The two gnomes are also going to be in the forward front of the scene. So I'm just going to have those three images be the first thing that I stamp. So I hope that makes sense. Um, there's a lot of video tutorials out there that teach a little bit better. I'm still learning. So this was kind of a practice um, card for me creating a scene with the masking technique. So I'm going to ink those up. I am using uh, Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. I'm going to stamp these up with Memento Tuxedo Black ink and stamp them off on some copy paper just because I haven't used these stamps yet, but they, they actually stamp perfectly. They're so adorable. I just can't stand it. <laughs> so then I took some masking paper and put it on the wrong side. That is the release paper side. You want to stamp your images on the white side of the masking paper. And then um, that way I'll have these masks for the images and I'll fussy cut those out. Now just a little tip on fussy cutting things like this that are small and kind of intricate. Just really take your time, go slow. I just stopped the camera and turned some music on and took my time to cut them out. So you really want to make sure that you have the edges a little bit shy of the uh, stamped line, like the outer edges of the stamps. So I kind of intercut, if that makes sense, or undercut them just a smidgen. So I went ahead and did that off camera, like I said, and created a mask for all of the images, including the tree, which you will see here in just a moment. So also placing the mask, again, because I undercut them a little bit, um, you want to make sure that you're lining it up so you can only just barely see that black outline on the outer side of the mask, if that makes sense too. Okay, so got those in place, and then now I'm going to go in and place the stump that the little fox will be sitting on, and also one of the trees behind the fox. So you'll see me kind of um, positioning those to where I kind of think the scene might look balanced. Uh, put my other stamps away and use my Tim Holtz stamping platform to get those lined up. And once you remove the mask, you'll see that the fox looks like he's actually sitting on the stump. So that's kind of the whole purpose of masking. Um, so hopefully you'll give it a try if you haven't or work, you know, do some practice like I did today. Um, you know, just, you got to really practice at this kind of thing to get, you know, get good at it. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> so then I decided that I wanted to stamp some more trees, but I want the stump showing. So it kind of looks like there's a little bit of a forest behind them. And, um, if I really was adventurous, I would have made a whole bunch of more mask of the trees and then created an entire forest behind them. Uh, but I just wasn't fussy cutting that tree mask out more than once. It's really, really um, cute. It's got all these little tiny wiggle squiggles. And that was fun. Not fun to fussy cut, but it was fun to color. Um, so I just decided to do it on both sides since I had mask on 
the tree and the gnomes so I could make three trees in the background. And really that's about it. Then we're going to work on um, a couple little images. The gnome on the left of the screen looks like he's jumping up in the air and maybe he dropped this present and dropped a little ornament. So that's kind of what I was doing to fill that little space there on the bottom left. And, um, you know, I don't need to mask those because they'll just be sitting forward in the snow in front of him. And then um, really after that, I just removed all of the mask and got started coloring. You can skip ahead if you don't want to see any of the coloring. I kind of skipped through the coloring anyway. So um, there's not, you know, it's not making you watch the whole entire thing. This really did take a long time. Uh, probably the entire day if not two days for me to get this actually finish the card but look how cute it came out I was really proud of myself getting all that masked and got it to look the way that I wanted so again here are some of the coloring that I left in to show you um, working with reds is really difficult for me you'll see here in just a moment that um, I changed the nibs I think I've shared before in the past using the um, super fine nibs that Copix makes. Um, you'll see me, I'm going to show a demonstration of changing out those nibs here in just a moment. But I did go ahead and change the nibs to that super fine nib. So when I was working on the trees and any other red coloring that I did, um, I wanted to make sure I had that really, really fine nib. Now, there's a lot of artists out there that are so good with Copix that they don't need those little tiny nibs, but I'm just not that great. I haven't colored in a long time or enough I don't color daily so um, really if you if you wanted to just take your time and hold your marker straight up and down it's a little bit easier to use these really prominent colors like red without bleeding but I you know again I, it's been a while so I did get bleeding you'll see I'll have to go in with my colorless blender and kind of clean up outside the lines where it bled too much I was a little heavy-handed and then um, at the end of the card, you'll see me figure out a way how to cover up. After all was said and done, I somehow smudged the red Copic ink all over my background in the sky. So <laughs> I was not, I was just like, no, I'm not throwing this away. I did a lot of work. I'm proud of myself. So how can I cover this red ink up in the sky? So you'll see that at the end of the video. And um, so, yeah, I thought overall um, it came out really cute. I absolutely love the stamps, love the images. And, um, you know, it was really cute little winter scene. So, again, um, I've cut, kind of cut here and there with the coloring out. So, if you have any questions of color choices I used, please leave a comment down below. Um, I apologize. It was just, like I said, a really long process. But I left in the coloring of one of the gnomes. One of the trees, I started coloring the fox, and then uh, the background sky is just a really, really light blue. So here I'm going in. I really think I picked the wrong color choice for the brown of the hair, but it is what it is, you know. So those are the, excuse me, E25 and E27 markers, I believe, or 35. Sorry, I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> E35, E37, and going in, I think I used the same color combo on the other gnome as well and um so yeah and then i just went in i really was doing basic coloring i didn't want to get too fancy with this um again i knew it was going to be a lot of coloring so i just kept it at kind of one to two markers per image or you know um here i'll bring in e41 i think that is or e31 for the nose which um, I went back and added some RO4, I think it was, to make it a little bit more of a peach color. I didn't think about it at the time, but the gnome probably would have had, you know, um, a more of a skin colored nose. So that's what I did there and added a little bit of peach into that brown. And then I colored the presents he's holding, his little um, sneakers or his little booties uh, green. And then the little ribbons in the hair green, which later you'll see I, at the end of the card, I went back and I was going to make the gloves in the boots that they're wearing black. I don't know why, but it didn't work out. It, I mean, I don't think you can tell unless you really zoomed in, but um, I did attempt to go in and 
uh, cover those red and I just wanted their boots and their mittens matching and I wanted them black so um, I attempted to do that so if you wanted to recreate something like this I would just really make an effort to decide on your color palette did you want um, you know do you want that much kind of mix and match you know I had red mittens and green shoes so um, ultimately I didn't like that I should have just stuck with all red or all green um, but whatever <laughs> it is what it is um, so you'll see a little bit of difference at the end of the card so anyhow I think we are gonna finish up this one little guy and then um, I'll get started on one of the trees so I'll be right back I am adding some details with the white marker and not that, that worked out I kind of rubbed it back in because I didn't like it and was just trying to create kind of a little bit more dimension on the hat um, adding some details to the nose and the clothes and what have you so um, that's just something I've been trying to work on getting better at I added some stripe detail to the present and um, went in and later I took a stardust jelly pen and I actually did those buttons with the stardust jelly roll pen so it's a little bit also the ribbon on the presents I used a stardust pen I'm not sure if I show that in the video but I did and added some stardust details to I think the other present laying on the ground so I did bring in three of the jelly rolls the black for the eyes white for details and the stardust for kind of the ribbons and the buttons and things like that so here's the stardust I believe yeah and I'm sorry if you can hear Ethan in the background he is gaming so he's being kind of loud but um, we're almost done here I'm sorry I really should have uh, just cut this part out but I thought someone might be interested to see how you know I kind of do my coloring and how my thought process is with uh, Copic coloring again I need more practice um, I need to just sit down and do more Copic coloring every day but there we go there's one of them and then here's the little demo I was telling you about using the sketch fine marker nibs and I decided I'm going to change out my reds and I think I changed out a green marker as well because I wanted to use it for the tree so we have yeah so we have a green and then I decide to do a lighter red and a darker red marker and put those in and I'll show you here in a minute how different that size is so there's your regular brush nib and the sketch fine another that's my R59 I think I decided to go with yeah I think the other one was R27 or R29 and then the green I'm not sure what color that was I'm sorry I think I showed the cap on screen but I didn't want to waste this all this ink so I grabbed some Yupo paper some alcohol blending ink and just decided to get what I could out of those before I tossed them I just thought oh that's a lot of ink in there you know so I'll do something with this background and I'm just literally trying to get out as much as I can out of those little nibs and then uh, toss those away and then I set this aside to dry and I am using the tweezers here to handle this so I'm not getting ink all over my fingers but yeah give that a little swirly around and it looks really really cool I love doing that I could watch that all day <laughs> but okay so I set that aside to dry <clears throat> excuse me and went back to coloring so like I said we're gonna work on one of the trees on camera and again you can fast forward ahead to let me see I think it's gonna take me oh goodness like almost to like I'm trying to look on the screen in front of me I think it's around 17 uh, 17 minutes mark <laughs> this is a long video anyway I'm looking on my editing screen in front of me and it looks like somewhere around 17 minutes is kind of the end of all the trees are colored and what have you so anyhow I'm sorry I'll put a mark and a notation at the beginning of the coloring and uh, so hopefully you'll have already seen where you can fast forward to 
But so yeah, very, very intricate little swirls, like I said, on this tree. I just think it's so adorable and so unique. I love the style of the artist and how she or he created all of the little snow banks on the tree. And um, just really, really enjoyed this and enjoyed coloring it. Again, I only use this one green on the trees. I did not go in and add any shading. I didn't do anything of the sort. Um, so yeah, I did color in the trunks of the tree and I kind of am using the same browns all throughout the card. I'm using the same greens all throughout the card. I may go darker or lighter, but I am staying in the same color family. So I'll bring in some B000 for the sky and I'm just going to go around all of the outline of the images. It's a very, very light blue, kind of like an Arctic blue and, um, that's going to help just kind of differentiate and let you know that there is, you know, something in the background behind the trees. So there's, you know, it's out in the woods and gives it the, um, you know, outlining that you need to give more definition, if that makes sense. And I didn't want to go anything too dark. I, I couldn't, I mean, I guess I could have left mask on everything and gone in with ink blending. That would have been an option at the beginning of the card. But I didn't really think about it or I didn't really want to do it. I can't remember. Um, so ultimately, I just grabbed a lightest blue marker I have to make a background. And I haven't done a voiceover in a long time either. So I apologize if the sound quality isn't that great or um, I'm not being very um, articulate. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway, I like you guys. Uh, thanks for your support. <laughs> putting up with me oh see there it is there's the big boo boo so i got the i dr accidentally drug the red when i ran around the side of that uh little guy's hat and drug up some red ink into the sky and i knew there was no way of getting that out but i wasn't gonna stop i had already done so much and then now i'm just kind of going around and creating the actual snow bank that is in the scene with them going around the base of the trees, going behind the little characters, kind of creating a snow, you know, ledge and giving it some definition and shape so it actually looks like they might be up on the little hill. And um, yeah, and, uh, and also that helps now to make that one little guy look like he's actually jumping up in the air. And then at the base of the other gnome, I put some little um, lines there. You can see it kind of gives a little impression that he's standing in the snow. So then I'll go back and just kind of blend that out. I used uh, the cool gray markers there. And I'll finish, like I said, I'll finish those trees off camera. I'm gonna go back in and add the little uh, same shade of blues to my little fox's hat. And ultimately I used the warm grays to color the fox. I did a little bit too heavy. So he looks like a gray fox, but technically he was supposed to be an Arctic fox, so he was supposed to be white. <laughs> but I wanted to incorporate that blue elsewhere on the scene and kind of balance it out. So that's why I made his hat blue. And he's just adorable. And let's see, what else? That's really about it. I am, you know, going to use, like I said, the same colors all throughout the image. <clears throat> Excuse me all throughout the card so it balances as best it can and then I'll show you at the end how I corrected covering up those three marks in the sky behind the gnome with the red ink and we will just fast forward to the end of this oh and I don't think I showed on camera but I did take my Marvy snow marker and I went on top of the little fox's uh, ball on his hat all of the snow on the trees I added some details at the you know basically the line <clears throat> excuse me the skyline and um, yeah and then heat set that so the snow bubbled up now this is my solution to save the card I took a, just a circle punch and I cut out some circles I cut them in half I cut them at different sizes now this one was the wrong one it was too big but you can see there it covered up that red ink and you know it kind of if you could see all the snow i think i'll show a close-up all this puffy snow um it kind of goes with it. it almost looks like maybe there's some really uh big clouds or really big snowballs in the background you know so here i'll correct that and put the right size on there 
And, uh, you know, I didn't want it to be the only thing just sticking on the right side of the card. So I added two more just to kind of make it look like it was supposed to be that way or it was part of the design. Um, but that's all I could think of, honestly, to salvage the card after all that work. But I think I'm going to show you here the close-up of the snow detail. That Marvy marker is just really cute, you know, cute and cool, adds texture to the card. And then I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to put a sentiment on the front. So let's just add some embellishments. I went in with some pink and main enamel dots, these little gems. And uh, I just ultimately decided to go with the little, really light blue uh, to bring some more blue. And then there's some gold detail with that um, Stardust pen. Um, and so I added some little gold ones as well. And that's the card. Thank you so much for your patience and your time. Uh, I apologize if the voiceover wasn't that great. But again, it's been a while since I had to go actually go out buy equipment to do the voiceover because... Um, the way that my computer is set up, I couldn't do a voiceover and music or even edit and do a voiceover. So I had to buy an adapter. So hopefully this is better. You don't have to listen to music the whole time. Just my little uh, scratchy voice. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you guys. I'll leave a link to Jamie's shop down below if you'd like to take a look at all of her adorable stamps that were released for winter. They're just really cute. I can't wait to pick up a few more. Uh, she has some really, really cute ones. Um, so yeah, check it out. Uh, check out the description below for links to her shop and to her channel. She always provides um, updates on what she has in her shop. She gives you ideas on how to use the stamps and also uh, new design team members and all the design team members have their channels. So um, yeah, I hope you'll check it out and I appreciate your time today watching my channel. I just took some MFT uh, cardstock here made a card base and that's four and a half by or five and a half by four and a quarter and just adhered the panel to this card and on the inside I'll probably stamp something like you know happy wishes for a wonderful Christmas or a happy winter you know so thanks again uh, I'll talk to you guys later thanks so much bye